Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and it's time for part two of the Q&A. So let's go ahead and get this started. All right, first question. Coach, I have seen you use an axle bar in some of your training videos. Do you think that incorporating some strong man event training would help a lifter reach your big five strength standards? Of course, I'm not talking about getting fat or eating 10,000 calories a day. Well, you know, getting fat and eating 10,000 calories a day would help you reach four of them but not the last one so it wouldn't help it would hurt you it would help with the other four if that's all you cared about i mean let's be realistic here if you wanted to get as strong as possible and you don't care about relative strength or wilk score or your health or, or certain other movements get fat i wouldn't recommend it but it would work it would help but over to the point over to the point uh I agree with you. Now, the, the getting fatter, the 10,000 calories a day, absolutely not what we need to be doing here. Uh, the axle bar is for grip work. It has nothing to do with strongman. It's there to improve my grip, improve my form, strength, uh, help with deadlifting, all of that. With some strongman event training. I don't know. That's such an ambiguous term. That's the problem with the words like strongman event. Well, I don't know. Could you be specific? Let's come back over to everything else. How do you get strong at five exercises? You say, okay, I have five movements I want to get strong at. Well, you need to practice close variations of those movements. Right? You need good programming and you need to do supplemental work to address your weak points. So let's, let's come over to what any of those events would be. Do they address your weak points? If they don't address any of your weak points, probably not. If they do address your weak points, and well, they, they might be helpful, right? Because your weak points are very individual. Now, that being said, has anyone ever gotten weaker by working hard? Hmm, probably not. So, if you wanted to reach those, those strength numbers, could incorporating an axle bar, clean and push press, or something like that, could it help? Yeah, it might. Right? It improve general pressing strength and pulling strength and grip strength. It might help. Because loaded carries help. Well, they improve grip. They increase conditioning. If your conditioning goes up, does your work capacity improve? Yeah. I mean, you could train a little more. Probably have better work density. Yeah, it might help. It kind of comes over to that point of do we need one specific thing? I mean, what is it you think that I do? I mean, I do conjugate. But what does that involve? That also involves GPP, general physical preparedness, which for me these days has been what loaded carries, sled drags, it falls into that category. Even for a while, a little while, I'm not doing it for now. I was doing on some of my off days, cleans with the axle bar. Well, for GPP, part of it. Sure, it might help, but like everything else, be selective in what you do. Does it address what you need it to address? Instead of random stuff of, hey, just random with this. No, you need to answer, will it help? You need to look at that specific thing that you are doing and say, will this help me reach my goals or not? Is it the best use of my time? Or is it just general physical preparedness, which can include a lot of stuff, which can always make up a percentage of our training. In which case, it still might be useful. But you need to look at it that way. You need to look at it of how does it fit into your specific training for you and your current weak points and needs. Not is it as a general rule. Because there are no general rules on that. Alright, next question. Hello coach. If I don't have enough plates to load the bar on deadlift, can I do snatch grip? I find it a harder variation and want your opinion about this lift. I guess you could. But, you know, it's not going to be that much difference. It's going to be some difference. You just buy a couple extra plates if that's the case. Uh, realistically, if you're really short on plates, speed pulls. Speed pulls. Dynamic effort work will go a long way. I'll ask you another question. Do you think that speed pulls combined with tons of good mornings, both of which will use a lot less weight, can't build your deadlift up? Of course they can. 
could do you could do snatch grip work you could do deficit work it's a whole lot of things you could do you have a lot of options there in fact let's come back over to the other thing with speed work you know i promote conjugate that's the training system i use that's what i promote to my clients do speed work find variations of the deadlift you can do for your max effort work with the plates that you have problem solved Except that you're going to get strong fast and it's going to be an issue. You do the stuff I just told you to do, you're going to outrun your plates again anyways. Yeah, so you're going to need more plates eventually no matter what. Alright, next question. And last question of the week. Are there any detrimental effects on the body when muscle is lost due to detraining? Okay. I want you to step back and think about that question. Let's remove the word detraining completely. Throw that away. We don't need that. Because that's honestly like saying, hey, are there any detrimental effects to having a hole put in your head by whatever object? The answer is yes. Let's throw detraining away. Are there any detrimental effects on the body when muscle is lost? Stop. Yes, there are a shitload of them. We do not want to lose muscle. It is never desirable under any reasonable circumstance from a health perspective or a longevity perspective to losing muscle. In fact, the older you get, we know that sarcopenia is an enormous, ridiculous contributor to all-cause mortality. So, first of all, what are the, one of the biggest detrimental effects? I don't know. You die easier. Okay. You die easier. It's called sarcopenia. One of the, the biggest negative consequences of aging is a loss of muscle tissue. So what does losing muscle tissue encompass? What are, what are some of the negatives? Well, you get hurt easier. Right? Less muscle mass. It's easier to get injured in general. Easier to get injured pulling stuff. It's easier to get injured falling down. It usually includes loss of bone mineral density. What does that mean? That means we break bones easier, fracture our hip easier, break our leg easier, break our arm easier. We're at a much higher risk of injury overall from losing muscle mass. Right? Muscle mass is protective against injury. Also helps, again, back over to the bone density thing. Stronger tendons, connective tissue. Uh, what about all the other health markers? Well, gaining muscle usually does what? It improves insulin sensitivity. Alright, so losing muscle tissue means what? We usually have a loss of insulin sensitivity, particularly if we're sedentary and not training. Well, what are our risks there? In increased risk of diabetes. Increased risk of cancer. More difficulty in fighting off cancer if you get it. All right. How about cardiovascular disease? Well, we know strength training and muscle mass are protective against cardiovascular disease. Now, the thing, thing people need to realize is that when we say that, we're not saying everyone who gains muscle will not have these issues. We're saying that you reduce your odds. Now, some of the things that people do to help them gain muscle and strength can, of course, have their own health consequences, bulking up too fat. Eating, because you can usually need more calories. Eating too much junk food and garbage in order to get the calories you need. And these things can contribute to health problems. They can offset some of the benefits of the muscle gain. But the muscle gain itself is, is generally very beneficial for health. Longevity. Even cognitive function as we age. So, if... Muscle is protective against all these things. What do you think losing muscle does? It reduces your protectiveness. There are tons of negative effects on the body. Again, everything from higher risk of injury, higher chance of getting hurt, to increased chances of diabetes and cancer. Pretty straightforward. It's not in your best interest to lose muscle. That's why people are like, well, my gym is closed. I'm thinking about the lockdown. And you didn't find some way to train? Very, very, very bad idea. 
All right, guys, well, that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.